Tractate Kalein, General Introduction. As we explained in the General Introduction to Seder Tahoros, Tuma takes effect on four categories of persons or objects. People, utensils, kalim, food, and beverages, liquids. Tractate Kalim deals with the second of these groups, utensils. Kalim, utensils, are objects that have been shaped to be used in some way. Raw materials, such as pieces of wood, rocks, lumps of metal, clay, or raw wool, are not kalim and they do not become tame. On the other hand, chairs, pots, beds, shovels, clothing, and saddles are all examples of kalim. And they can become tame. Not all kalim become tame. There are a number of rules governing which kalim become tame and how they become tame. These rules sometimes change depending on the kind of material the kli is made from. For example, the rules for metal kalim are somewhat different from those of wooden kalim, and both of them are different from earthenware kalim. 1. Types of kalim. There are seven categories of kalim that become tame on the biblical level, three categories of kalim that do not become tame at all, and one that becomes tame by rabbinic law. Kalim made of earthenware, metal, wood, leather, animal bones, sack, fabric made from goat's hair, and cloth all become tame under biblical law. Kalim made from stone, earth, or animal dung do not become tame at all. Kalim made from glass become tame by rabbinic law. A. Earthenware Kalim Earthenware is made from clay mixed with water. It is fashioned into the desired shape and then fired, baked, in an oven to be hardened. Pottery and china are common examples of earthenware. Kalim made from unbaked clay are considered earth kalim and do not become tame. Earthenware kalim become tame only if they are shaped as a container that is meant to hold things. Flat earthenware kalim do not become tame. See chapter 2, Mishnah 1. Unlike other types of kalim, earthenware kalim become tame only from their insides and not from their outsides. This means that the source of tuma must either touch some part of the inside of the utensil or hang inside its airspace. A source of tuma that touches the outside of the utensil does not make it tame. This law is unique to earthenware. The airspace of a kli is the area inside its walls. The airspace of a kli ends at the top of its sides. A source of tuma hanging over the top of the kli above its side walls does not make it tame. Just as an earthenware kli becomes tame through its airspace, so too it transmits tuma if it is tame to things that enter its airspace. See chapter 2, Mishnah 1. And see below section 2, uh, D. Once an earthenware kli becomes tame, even its outside transmits tuma. See chapter 2, Mishnah 1. 1. Oven and stove. The ovens and stoves of ancient times were usually made of earthenware. Generally speaking, they did not have a bottom. Rather, they were placed on the ground or on a base attached to the ground and then cemented to it with a layer of clay around the bottom of the oven or stove. The fire was placed on the ground or base inside the oven or stove. The earthenware oven and stove are subject to special rules. On the one hand, since they are made of earthenware, they become tame only through their insides. On the other hand, since they generally have no bottom, they are not containers, and yet the Torah says that they become tame. See Vayikra chapter 11 verse 35. Similarly, although they are usually attached to the ground and kalim attached to the ground do not become tame, the Torah says that they do become tame. The Torah thus teaches that earthenware stoves and ovens become tame from their insides, even though they are not containers and even though they are attached to the ground. This law is unique to earthenware stoves and ovens. 2. Tahara. Earthenware kalim that become tame cannot be made tahor again by being immersed in a mikveh. They become tahor only when they break. See chapter 2, Mishnah 1. B. Metal kalim. Kalim made of metal, gold, silver, copper, iron, tin, lead become tame whether they are containers or not. Even flat metal kalim, such as a knife, become biblically tame. This is a unique feature of metal kalim. Like most kalim, metal kalim become tame from a source of tuma that touches either their insides or their outsides. However, they become tame only by direct contact being touched with the source of tuma, but not through their airspace. See Mishnah and Hulin chapter 1, Mishnah 6. Thus, if a source of tuma enters the inside of a metal kli but does not touch any part of it, it remains tahor. Metal kalim are ta that are tame transmit tuma to other things both from their insides and their outsides, but, on but only by direct contact and not through their airspace. This is the law for all kalim beside besides earthenware. 1. Tahara. Metal kalim that are tame can be made tahor again by being immersed in a mikveh. They also become tahor by being broken. 
However, if they are then fixed, their precious, their previous tumor returns. See chapter 11, mission 1. This is a rabbinic decree unique to metal utensils. See the Gemara Shabbos 16a. 2. Oven and stove. Metal ovens and stoves are not subject to the special laws of ovens and stoves mentioned above for earthenware. Thus, they do not become tamay if they are attached to the ground. They become tamay only according to the ordinary rules of metal kalim. See chapter 5, Mishnah 11. See, wooden kalim. Wood comes from the trunks of trees. However, in regard to the laws of kalim, all plants are treated as wood. Thus, baskets made from cane, reeds, grasses, palm leaves, and the like are all considered wooden kalim. Wooden kalim become tamay only if they are shaped as a container and are meant to be used to hold things. Flat wooden kalim do not become tame. See chapter 2, Mishnah 1. This is the biblical law. However, the rabbis decreed that certain flat wooden kalim that serve the needs of both a person and his kalim also become tame. Thus, a table, which serves both a person and his kalim, dishes, silverware, can become tame rabbinically even though it is flat and not a container. Like most kalim, wooden kalim become tame both from their insides and their outsides. They become tame only by direct contact with the source of tuma and not through their airspace. See chapter 2, Mishnah 1. Thus, if a source of tuma enters the inside of a wooden cleave but does not touch any part of it, it remains tahor. Wooden kalim transmit tuma in the same way, only by direct contact and not through their airspace. Wooden kalim become tahor either by being immersed in a mikvah or by breaking. D. Leather kalim. Leather kalim are utensils made from the hides of animals. Only those made from the hides of land animals become tame, not those that are made from bird or fish skins. See chapter 17, Mishnah 13 and 14. In general, the laws of leather kalim are the same as those of wooden kalim. Thus, they must be a container. They, be, they become tame from their insides or outsides, but not through their airspace. And they transmit tuma in the same way. They become tahor either by being immersed in a mikvah or by breaking or tearing. See chapter 2, Mishnah 1. E. Bone kaleem. Bone kaleem are utensils made from animal bones. Only utensils made from the bones of land animals are considered kaleem in regard to the laws of Tuma, not those made from the bones of birds or fish. See chapter 17, Mishnahs 13 and 14. Kaleem made from the horns or hooves of animals are also considered bone kaleem. In general, the laws of bone kaleem are the same as those of wood and leather kaleem. Thus, they must be a container. They become tame from their insides and outsides, but not through their airspace, and they transmit tuma in the same way. They become tahor either by being immersed in a mikvah or by breaking. See chapter 2, Mishnah 1. F. Cloth. Cloth is a woven fabric made from the wool of sheep or from plant fibers, linen, canvas, etc., or silk. Felt, fibers of wool pressed together, is also considered cloth in regard to these laws. Although the word beged usually means an article of clothing, here it means simply a piece of cloth whether or not it is used as a garment. However, it must be something that serves the needs of people and not something that serves to protect other kaleem. G. Sack. Sack cloth is a fabric made from goat's hair. It is not generally used for making clothing because it is not soft like the wool of sheep. Nevertheless, it can be woven into a rough fabric and made into sacks for transporting goods. In general, the rules for sacks are the same as the rules for wood, leather, and bone kaleem. H. Glass kaleem. Under biblical law, glass does not become tame. Nevertheless, the rabbis decreed tuma for glass kalim. They decreed that it should become tame and transmit tuma from both its outside and its inside, but only through direct contact, not through its airspace. It becomes tahor again by breaking, and if it is then repaired, it can become tame again, but does not get back its previous tuma. See chapter 30, Mishnah 1. Glass kalim do not become tahor by being immersed in a mikvah. See Rambam Hilchus Mikvahs 1, 2. Glass kaleem become tame only if they are containers. If they are flat, they do not become tame even under rabbinic law. See chapter 2, Mishnah 1, chapter 30, Mishnah 1. 2. General Laws of Kaleem There are a number of general laws that apply to all or almost all kaleem, regardless of what they are made from. A. Not too large to carry. In order for a kli to become tame, it must be movable even when it is full. If its container holds so much that it cannot be moved when it is completely filled, it does not become tame. Generally speaking, a kli that holds 40 saw of liquid or two cores of solids is considered too large to become tame. See chapter 15, Mishnah 1. This rule applies only to wood, leather, and bone kaleem, as well as sacks. It does not apply to earthenware or metal kaleem. B. Completely made. In general, a new kli does not become fit to become tame unless it has been completed. However, the definition of completed is different for different kinds of kaleem. 
A wooden clea is considered complete as soon as it is fit to use for its basic function. Even if the owner is planning to make further improvements to it, once it is fully usable, it is fit to become tame. A metal clea, however, is not considered complete until everything the owner meant to do for it has been completed. A number of Mishnahs in this tractate teach when certain kinds of kalim are considered complete and can become tame. Si, yados, handles. Not everything attached to a kli is considered part of the kli. Many items are considered kalim in their own right despite being attached. To be considered a part of a kli, the attachment must perform the basic function of the kli. However, there are some attachments that play an important role in the use of the kli, even though they do not contribute to its main function. These are known as yados, literally handles. For example, the handle of a pot helps a person lift and carry the pot, an important function, without contributing to cooking the food. The yad handle of a kli is considered part of the kli with regard to tuma. Thus, if a source of tuma touches the main part of the kli, the yad also becomes tame and it can transmit tuma to things that touch it. By the same token, if a source of tuma touches the yad, the main part of the kli becomes tame. This is true even if the yad is not something that could become tame on its own. The law of yados is not limited to handles. It applies to any extra part that is important to the proper use of the kli. Handles are just one example of this. D. Can it become tame only from an avatuma? Under biblical law, a kli can become tame only from an avatuma. It cannot become tame from a rishon or a sheni. For this reason, when a kli becomes tame, it cannot transmit tuma to another kli. Since the first kli became tame from an av, it became a rishon, and a rishon cannot make a kli tame. A rishon can also not make a person tame. Thus, the only things that a tame kli can make tame are foods and beverages, liquids, which can become a sheni by being touched by a rishon or by entering the airspace of a tame earthenware kli. 1. A kli that became tame from a human corpse. An exception to this rule is a kli that becomes tame from a human corpse. A human corpse is considered an avi avos hatuma, and it makes whatever becomes tame from it into an avatuma. There is also a special law that if a kli becomes tame from a corpse, it takes on the same level of tuma as the corpse itself. This law is known as literally the sword is tame like the slain person. Thus, it is possible for a kli to become tame in this manner on the level that of an avatuma or even avi avasatuma and thereby transmit tuma to other kalim. This rule does not apply to earthenware kalim, which can never become more than a rishon. To a kli that became tame from liquids that were tame. Under rabbinic law, there is another exception to this rule. The rabbis decreed that liquids that become tame can be make a kli tame. See chapter 2, Mishnah 7. E. Anything fit to become tame as midras. Even those types of kalim that do not become tame unless they are containers, such as wood, bone, and leather, can become tame if they are meant to be used as a midras, something that is used to sit, lie, or ride on. These become tame not only when they are used as a midras by the type of tame person who normally transmits tuma through these actions, see Mishnah chapter 1, Mishnahs 3 and 4, but they become tame even when they are touched without being used in these ways, see chap Nita chapter 6, Mishnah 3. The study of tractate kalim is made more difficult by our lack of knowledge of the kinds of kalim that were commonly used in the times of Mishnah. The Rishonim and Ahronim who wrote commentaries on tractate kalim often differ in their descriptions of these ancient utensils, and it is often difficult to reconstruct from their words a clear picture of how these utensils looked or worked. A number of recent works have addressed this problem, and their researches and sketches have helped the students of Torah to better understand this difficult Masechta. The many color illustrations that are in the Art Scroll Elucidated Edition, should you choose to buy it, and in their commentary, are based primarily on two works. Tivnis Kalim and the Living Torah Museum. Tiv Tavnis Kalim, I mean, Tavnis Kalim by Rabbi Eliezer Pose in Zitzal of London, England, is a very thorough and enlightening work illustrating the various Kalim according to each of the main commentaries to the Mishnah in which they appear. Anyone who wishes to study Kalim in greater depth is advised to use this safer. The Living Torah Museum in Brooklyn, New York, has a fascinating collection of ancient biblical and Talmudic utensils, and its founder, founder and director, Rabbi Shaul Shimon Deutsch, is a fountain of knowledge on ancient vessels of all kinds. Both Rabbi Posen and Rabbi Deutsch graciously made their work available to uh, Art Scroll. Each of Art Scroll's illustrations is labeled with the source from which it was taken or based. 
those that are not labeled are based on Art Scroll's own researches and ideas. All of Art Scroll's illustrations are based on the description given by the commentaries they have cited. However, none of those illustrations should be taken as definitive, since even with the best research, a certain amount of imagination must be used to fill in the details and reconcile the pictures with the words of the Mishnah and commentaries.